Hey everybody, Jordan Reeder here, your Seattle area real estate agent. And hey, it's no secret that we are coming into spring and you've probably been thinking about selling your house here in Seattle, but what are the things that you need to look out for before listing it? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna go over in today's video. We're gonna talk about the eight things you need to know before selling your house in Seattle, and we're gonna get after that right now. We're gonna start with the first thing that you need to know before selling your home in Seattle, and that is to get an inspection on your house before you list it. Now, many agents are gonna have differing viewpoints on this one, and it's because of disclosure. So here in Washington and pretty much everywhere, sellers complete a disclosure form that's filled out prior to listing the property. Was there ever any water damage? How about pest infestation? Did your roof ever leak? And on and on and on. So some agents advise against getting an inspection before the listing because you technically don't have to disclose a problem that you don't know about yet. But here's my opinion, don't be this person. By getting an inspection first, you're gonna eliminate any surprises and also allow you to address any of the items that could potentially harm the sale of your home in the first place. If you decide not to get one, just be prepared to offer concessions to the potential buyer or lose out on a potential offer if unexpected items show up during the inspection that the buyer obtains for themselves. Keep in mind, in a multiple offer situation in this market, losing out on just one offer could mean five, ten, twenty thousand dollars or even more, depending on how aggressive the other offers are coming in at. So get an inspection. The second thing you need to know, get a roof inspection. One of the first questions that I get from buyers all the time is when was the roof replaced? Buyers may be willing to pay 20 to 25% higher than list price in the crazy market that we're in, but that could go down significantly if there are roof problems that they don't know about. So the roof is vital and a new buyer can become uneasy if the roof is at all sketchy. This does piggyback off of the first item that we talked about as well. Just because you haven't uncovered a roof issue doesn't mean that it's not there. And a lot of times it may be better for the seller to just offer a credit to, this, to the potential buyer rather than paying out of pocket for a brand new roof. Number three, make necessary repairs or should you? Now, one of the questions I get almost daily is, Jordan, what types of renovation should I do before I list my house for sale? I got crappy carpets, you know, my kitchen needs some work. My answer is gonna probably surprise you. It may be worth it, but only, and I mean this, only if the dollar that you spend will turn into $2 by the time you go to sell. The last thing that you want is to waste not only time, but also money that you're not going to get back. Now, now, I commend you, right? I commend a lot of sellers uh, because they have that pride of ownership and they wanna put out a good product, but you have to look at it from a business perspective. Just because you spend money to improve something in your house doesn't mean that it's considered investing. Sometimes it's just considered flushing money down the toilet. This is something that I specialize in for my clients that are looking to sell. So I typically do a complete analysis on their home, uh, see if a renovation would be worth it, see if we can turn that $1 that they'd spend into two. And if it's worth it, I complete the renovation using my own money and I allow the seller to keep all the equity. I simply get paid for my time and expertise uh, while you get all the upside. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I'm gonna put my contact information right up here. Uh, so feel free to shoot me a text or call me or email me anytime. All right, so the fourth item, don't live there. <laughs> uh, but if you do, make sure that it doesn't look like it. The best way to show your house in the best possible light is to simply not live there. Buyers are always asking if the property is lived in or vacant before they go see it. I don't really know why. It's just something that they want to know. I think some buyers almost feel like they're intruding when they see a house that's lived in rather than being vacant. I do advise my clients to offer vacant listings if at all possible. Now that doesn't mean that I'm forcing you to live somewhere else, but if it is somewhat convenient for you and it fits within your time frame and budget uh, to offer your house vacant when selling, then I'd say it does help in a variety of ways. But if you absolutely must live in the house while you're selling, uh, number five and number six on this list will help your house show at its best. Real quick, if you've gotten any value from those first four tips, uh, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so I can keep bringing you this awesome content. 
So now on to number five, and that is to clean, declutter, and stage it with real furniture. So we've all been there. We see a listing on Zillow or on Redfin. It looks awesome in pictures, right? Then you show up and the staging was completely gone. It's basically a vacant house. Uh, one of two things happened in that situation. Number one, the house was sitting for long enough and the seller just didn't want to continue paying that month to month staging bill. Or number two, they pay for virtual staging. The fact is that people buy houses based on emotion, right? And they like that house because of how it makes them feel. I know as cliche and cheesy as this sounds, but I can promise you that no furniture equals no feelings and no feelings equals no sale. People just do not like to walk into an empty house. Uh, it feels cold and it uh, makes it difficult for them to really feel like they could live there. Now, don't get me wrong. You're gonna have some buyers that say that they can overlook this. And yes, there are people that can overlook not having a staged house. No virtual staging will do for me what physical staging will do. We have one chance to make that buyer feel something positive when they spend their time viewing your house. Make sure it's staged, make sure it's clean. Oh, and one more side note. A lot of sellers that I work with may have furniture that doesn't look the greatest, or maybe they have a few areas around the house that are pretty vacant. I always recommend a partial stage. Yes, some stagers will do this. They will come out and they'll stage certain areas. So it's like a mix between their furniture and yours, and it can be a really good way to elevate what you currently have. Again, I can consult with you on this beforehand and make sure that you have a really good plan of action before listing, but hit me up if you need any help selling your house. I'm happy to assist you through the process. All right, number six, get professional photos taken with a 3D walkthrough. I'm sure I'll only need to say this once. Don't take your own listing photos. Leave it to the professionals. Also, now it is especially important to include a 3D walkthrough of the property as well. The market is hot, people are busy, and when buyers are ready to cut a check for above asking price, they want to see the good, bad, and the ugly before they come out and check out the listing. Sometimes buyers have less than 24 hours to make a decision to write an offer. I've had clients that had less than an hour to do so. Invest in the walkthrough. It does help, and please, please, please pay someone to take nice pictures. For all my clients, I pay for the professional photography, I pay for a 3D walkthrough out of my own pocket. That way I can control the product that is being shown to potential buyers. And I also do a point of view video walkthrough to give a different perspective as well. Number eight, price your home correctly. So you're finally at the home pricing conversation with your real estate agent. Here's my advice, don't overprice it. Seems pretty obvious, right? But again, emotions can get in the way, especially if you have put any money into your house up until this point. The thought going through your head is typically, let's try and get that money back that we put into it by pricing it into the listing. But that is the wrong move. That's the wrong way to think about it. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is pull the highest and best offer out of buyers. What can we do to get them to think in maximums? As in, what is the maximum amount that they're willing to pay for the house? We give them a low price. That way the buyers know that they're gonna have to compete with other buyers to get the deal. I always joke with my clients that are selling and I tell them that we should just list it for $1 and see where it goes. I promise them that they would end up getting what they wanted for it. It's what I call the price is right rule. If everyone else is pricing their houses on the high end, then come in at a dollar, okay, maybe not that low, but come in below them and your house will see all of the buyers that are looking at that price point, they're all gonna swing by and check it out. Activity is the name of the game here. Give buyers a reason to book a showing. All right, we're finally to number eight, and that is provide a home warranty to the buyer. Honestly, this is simply a feel-good gesture. It's not going to get a buyer to pay more, but it makes them feel comfortable doing so. That warranty probably didn't seal the deal, but at least it makes you feel like you made the right choice. The other thing that this will do that's rarely talked about is it can also give the buyer peace of mind when submitting an offer that could be 20% above ask and above what they wanted to pay for the house in the first place. Is it worth 500 bucks? In my opinion, it is. So there you have the eight things that you must know before listing your house in Seattle. If you're looking to sell your house soon and would like help from an expert, I'm putting my contact information right below me here. Feel free to call, text, email me anytime or schedule a call by clicking on the link below. If you got value out of today's video, please hit that like button, leave a comment below and subscribe to my channel. I'm bringing you content about all things real estate here in Seattle. 
So now that you have some really good tips on selling your house, where are you gonna be moving next? Well, if you're staying here in the greater Seattle area and you wanna know more about some of the great cities to consider living in, continue on to this video right here where I'm gonna walk you through the best neighborhoods in Bellevue, Washington. It's gonna be worth a watch, so check it out. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next one.